We are driving through beautiful land of Swaziland. From 2018, this country is called the Kingdom of Eswatini. We are now in the southeastern corner of the African continent. The country is landlocked, surrounded by South Africa on three sides and uh, Mozambique on its eastern border. The main reason of us coming to this country is to visit the oldest iron mine in the world. It is called in Gwena and it is in the western part of the country. Alright everyone, welcome to Nguenya Mine, what is officially in Swaziland. Uh, welcome to Nguenya Mine in Swaziland, um, close to the border of South Africa. You are now officially at the oldest official mine declared by mainstream archaeology, 43,000 years old. As I mentioned on the bus, the guy that found this mine Peter Beaumont, or found the ancient mining activity here, Peter Beaumont, in the early 60s, originally declared and um, proposed that this ancient mining activity is more than 100,000 years old. But that was never recorded in any mainstream archaeological books because that just goes too far for mainstream archaeology. And eventually they settled on 43,000 years. And we have BJ, the local tour guide here, that's going to take us through a little bit of history of some of the modern iron mining. But we are more interested in the ancient stuff up the mountain there. So take it away, BJ. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome once again. My name is BJ. BJ stands for Peggy Chabla, and my surname is Shawang. I'm a tour guide here. So you welcome here at uh, Nguenya, old iron ore mine. So the place is called Nguenya. Ingwenya it is in my vernacular that is in Siswati. Ingwenya means crocodile in English. So it's called crocodile because before mining, the terrain, the shape of the mountain was more like a shape of a brasking crocodile. So that is why it's called crocodile. Okay. So there was a survey done along these mountains uh, early 60s. They discovered that there were mine, old mines. Oh, at first they discovered that there were three. And then uh, the other two were destroyed, so one remained, and then we call it Lion Kevin. It's called Lion Kevin, but there were no lions. So it's like no crocodile, no lions. <laughs> there were no lions. They called Lion Kevin because of, you know, beer. Yes. B -E -R. They, they don't know the lion beer, no. So it's called Lion because of a South African brand, uh, Lion Lager. They say they found that there were empty cans of. I, uh, of lion lager beer in the cave so that is why they call it lion kevin so, really? so yeah <laughs> I, know, I, I, I prefer not to share that part of the story we're going to tell the people there were lions guarding the cave <laughs> <laughs> so actually this uh, this survey was done just along the mountain so they discovered that here we have iron maybe if we're supposed to drive plus or minus 40 kilometers north we're going to reach a place called uh she mine where we have gold and, and moving further north before reaching uh, Peaks Peak we have uh, Komati River before crossing Komati River we have black chat red chat black uh, green chat and uh, gold as well then we go to have a look we have uh, asbestos then Peaks Peak we have we have gold and Lulfafa and Horo is gold as well. So the discovery of these minerals attracted a lot of people for commercial purpose. They just wanted to come and mine. So for commercial purpose, the government of Swaziland given the opportunity to Anglo-American. They started mining for commercial purposes from 1964 and they stopped 1977. So they took about 28,370,000 tons of good iron quality. 
So to transport the iron from the mining site to halfway station by the main road called Gatage, they were using conveyor belts and tipper trucks. Then from Gatage, they were using railway line. That is the train, take it to the harbor in Mozambique. Then from Mozambique, it was being taken to Japan. So it was being taken as uh, small rocks, not like crushed like but taken as small rocks to, to Japan. So they stopped mining 1977. The reason they stopped mining 1977 is not because we no longer have iron around. We still have good quality, almost 50 million tons around this area. So they stopped because first they say that uh, the cost of iron world market have went down, say they were no longer making good profit. And the other reason is because of civil wars in Mozambique. Mid-70s, there were civil wars in Mozambique between Ferrolimo and Rinamo. But we have some benefits like job creation to the people, about plus or minus a thousand of people. They have Swazi people, they got jobs. And then even Anglo-Americans have built structures. Now, throat, church, uh, I can mention a lot, but uh, just a few for now, so I can say, Anglo-American was good to the Swazi people. So the mining site is including even this one. So as you look at up there on the edges, it was like looking big as like big mountain like that one. You see. So they dig up until they went to 11 where they found out there is water coming up like this one. Now this water is not rain water. It's just water from underground. This is underground water. And then people we have beliefs like most of Africans, most of our beliefs, they are similar. We have beliefs in ancestors, you know. So maybe somebody, okay, maybe if I was having time, I was going to explain to you what I mean when I say ancestors. In short, when you say ancestors, uh, the belief of my, like Swazi people, old Swazi people, they believe that the dead people, they are not dead. It's like they are just sleeping, huh? Mm -hmm. So they are so close to God. So if you wanna, maybe if you want something from God, you have to talk with the all the, the third people and then you say ah PJ now uh, I need uh, I need money or I have bad luck <laughs> so may you may, may you father because you are late talk with God so that you can help me so even we have other rituals like here people sometimes pe members of the Zion family more especially ZCCC if I can make example they come and collect this water they have a belief that is having some healing power and sometimes people coming coming to collect this water not collecting actually just people coming to this pond are the divers from the pol from the police force just for practices so this one is called it a secret a secret dam like some people they call it a monster monster lake why they call it monster lake it is because uh old people they used to tell us that please don't come close like as you can read this yes. don't go beyond uh, this danger the reason why don't go beyond the, the just telling stories not all people they want us to be always safe they're saying like if you go so close here you'll find that there is a very very big snake it's gonna swallow you and kill you. Now. <laughs> that is why maybe they're saying. But I'm just thinking it is a reason they, they didn't want us to be in danger. Okay. So now the, the first one we cannot go. Now we cannot go up there. It's where we're having the lion cavern, the oldest mine known in the world. We, we call it lion cavern, I've already mentioned. Why it is called, it is known as the oldest known mine in the world. It is because of the radiocarbon dating which took place early 60s. So they say that uh, Peter Pumat find that they were digging up, like coming with an archaeology, then they were digging up some samples, then they took it for radiocarbon dating, and it backdated to uh, as far as 43,000 years ago. Actually, they were saying that the instrument that they were using will only backdate to 43,000 years ago. And that is why they are saying it's possible, there are possibilities that it's more than 43,000 years. You know? So they just recorded 43,000 years because the scale, the instrument that they were using only backdated to 43,000 years ago. So by that time, it's the time when even the Swazi people were not around because the Swazi people, they are the members of the Bandu or the Nguni that originated from Central Africa and East Africa. So this is during the Stone Age. The people who are mining here, we have a belief that they are the sand. Some they call them koi koi or they call them bushmen. So they were mining this rusted iron, okra, hematite. The use of and specralite. So the use of uh, the iron, the okra. They're using it to make paintings on the walls of the caves because most of the time they were living in caves. And then they were mobile people. They were living a nomadic life, killing wild animals, collecting wild fruits, digging up some roots. Then they were moving from one place to another. That is why if you go around Southern Africa, either you're going to Mozambique, Eswatini, 
South Africa, you may find that there are these paintings. It's not because maybe the same people were a very big group. It is just because they were mobile, moving from one place to another, one place to another. So if you look at the paintings, you may find that the, some of the paintings, they look like maybe they are pictures of people. They're just making pictures of themselves, uh, maybe showing themselves like they killing wild animals or they can show pictures of wild animals just like nowadays like having camera maybe just taking pictures some they saying that they cannot do that during some uh, rituals find that way you having some rituals more like uh, some of the rituals are similar as those of the Swazi people okay so we have another material we call it specrolite so specrolite is a glittering material, but this one is too small, man. You cannot even see. But while you're just walking around, I think you cannot get some of this. So the use of specrolite, the same people, because uh, in comparison with most of the Africans, I'm not like a uh, discriminative. No, when I'm talking about skin color, I'm not discriminative. I think maybe you can understand that. They are saying that the same people, they were light skinned in comparison with most of the Nguni. So they were easily affected by the sun, like today, you know, it's too hot. So they were using this specular light. Because up there, we're going to be able to maybe make some example. Specular light is a glittering material. So you're taking it and then you make the painting on the board and then it reflects the sun away okay so i hope that you will really enjoy the walk then we're gonna walk up there and then here the place we are it's uh Anguenya and location of Anguenya it is northwestern side of Eswatin or of Swaziland and Swaziland is surrounded by two countries about three quarters is South Africa and then the last quarter in the eastern side it is Mozambique so when we just up there on top I just try to show you where is the border to South Africa not on the northern side because that one going peak peak Chepis Reef it is northern side but in the western side here we're having Osho border gate but I just try to to show you exactly where it is I hope you really enjoy our tour so then we can start walking we are allowed to take pictures group photo or whatsoever with a certain background it's okay thank you so much in archaeology we have five questions what who when how and why when you come to the site there is a plaque which describes the site it is said on the plaque that uh, this was a lion's cavern that the iron mine is 43,000 years old and that 1600 years back the Bantu people started coming in using mining for the purpose of the ceremonial and other processes The process of deception starts with the description what? What is this? They named that place, the top of the mountain, where millions of iron ore had been mined. The lion's cover. The name is from 1960s and lions is actually the brand of beer from 60 years back. Secondly, the age. Archaeologists working there in the early 1960s found organic material which they dated. It was just 10 years after this method had been discovered and uh, the most they could go with dating was 43,000 years and they got to that limit. So, at least what we can say, it is 43,000 plus years old, or at least showing the signs of habitation in what is known as the mine. And even if it was exactly 43,000, this is just the radiocarbon date. We know, based on experience, that we need to add 14 to 15 percent on top of it to get the calibrated date or calendar age. So if it was 43,000, it should be at least 50,000. But obviously it was much more than that. Lately in uh, non-scientific sites like Wikipedia, they came up with another date. 
27,000 years. Of course, one would expect that conventional science would try to reduce the date because there is no way for them to explain what was happening tens of thousands of years back. Why they choose 27,000? Because the oldest rock art in this country is 27,000 years. So they wanted to hook to something. Now, archaeologists are talking about the three time periods in the last few hundred thousands of years. One is Paleolithic or the Stone Age which according to them lasted for hundreds of thousands of years ever since Homo sapiens showed up on the face of the planet and it lasted until 12,000 years back huge catastrophe happened then the end of the last ice age and then they had intermediate period of about 2,000 years and after that Neolithic times Paleolithic Mesolithic, Neolithic. Archaeologists, of course, in their conventional wisdom, trying to place everything, all human civilizations, in the last 10,000 years. Encyclopedia Britannica was pioneering the efforts to try to explain us that history of advanced human societies is just 6,000 years old. And they've been holding to it for the longest time. Of course, now we know that it is nonsense. For tens of thousands of years, we do have many examples on all continents of advanced societies. Now, the plague does not explain how. For them, it's logical that somebody come without the tools and extract very hard material iron ore. And finally the question why? This is where they show their mastership. Now they connected 43,000 somehow with the Bantu people who used only the red color for the ceremonial purposes. So people think that was the only purpose why would somebody come there and mine the iron ore. Well, if you do mine the iron ore, then you are making tools, you are making weaponry, you are using the advantage of very hard metal. But the problem with the conventional archaeology is the Iron Age officially started only 3,000 years back, not 43,000 or 100,000 years back. So what they do, they do everything to mislead the public. And even though we do have confirmation of extremely old age, they found a way for people not to ask questions. It's amazing for me that 60 years after the discovery and after the first radiocarbon dating results, we don't see efforts to try more way to date the site. Nowadays, besides radiocarbon dating, we have many other methods. If you go extremely deep in the past, we can use argon method, we can use cobalt method, we can use luminescence method and some others and get down to the age of the site. When it comes to people, since they have only Sun, Bushmen and Bantu, they are saying ancestors of Sun people were there. Who were the ancestors? They were not the Sun people. They were not the Bushmen or Bantu. These are the questions that required answers. At this point, we can speculate about those answers. But if we speculate, it is not science anymore, is it?